Okay, so I'm back at the building and I just want to give you a sample. A lot of just Hey, it's Jason. Thanks for tuning in. So I got a um, an email from the guy that I met who is part of the original family that owned Jason and Jack's our building. So this building uh, initially, at least this section, was a service station and then the fabrication shop and stuff was added at a later date. But it dates to around 1920s, late 1920s, early 1930s. So it's, you know, conceivably about a hundred year old building, at least this half of it. And when I bought the building, he noticed I was doing work on it. He came in, introduced himself, gave me some really cool pictures. And we've kind of just stayed in touch and, you know, exchanged emails and that sort of thing over the past couple uh, years, I guess, at this point. I had to go back in my keys. I won't get too far without those. But what I was saying was he gave me a lot of history on the building and he sent me an email and said, hey, Jason, my uh, his mother died um, and he's an old old gentleman and he's cleaning out the barn now, which is right down the street from the building. And he said, I came across some stuff that looks like it may have came from what used to be called the Wayside Garage which I have an original picture up there of it. Do you want it? I said, absolutely, I would love to have it. Thank you for thinking of me. So I'm gonna head on over and take a peek at what he has and um, have some more history on the building. So stay tuned. It is crazy how close it is, you know, but it all makes sense, you know, what would have been his great, great grandparents started the garage. They were about a mile away from the garage with a big farm and a barn. So like, you know, back in the day, you know, they probably drove the Model A or Model T down dirt roads that are now asphalt roads to the garage and excess stuff they took back and put in their barn and it just sat. I mean, some of this stuff, maybe it's been sitting there for 90 or 100 years. So I'm coming up on it. It seems like uh, there's even more orchards and whatnot back behind this area of the building that I wasn't even aware of. Yeah, so this is it. This is where the original owner of the building would have lived. So very interesting. Kind of cool to see this barn. Okay, so super, super nice guy. He gave me all kinds of cool catalogs. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of them, but I know some people have some old cars at the AACA Museum that I'll give them to. Some of them, if they're too beat up, maybe I'll cut a few pages out and frame them and put them at the antique booth. And then some of them I'll just keep in the building and it will be kind of like decorations for people to flip through as though there. So pretty cool experience and it's kind of neat to continue to be connected to the building's history you know in many many different ways because i want the building to live on for many many years okay i'm back from picking up uh all of this cataloging catalogs and manuals and a lot of books on desoto parts list you can see here sheet metal work just a old grimy book, which I'll clean this up. It's not too concerning to me. Something with bolts and nuts from 1938. So literally just a catalog of different 
bolts and nuts, a service handbook, a bunch of the old Motor Age magazines, 1957. I put a few of the harder books over here, the hardcover books, Chilton manuals. This one's from 1959. The Thompson repair and tune up. Just a little bit of soap and water to wipe these down and they'll be okay. So I'm gonna keep them out in the main garage just because they're so dusty, but I'm gonna finish unloading them and that's that.